Mr. Ingram here, and uh, I am here to present uh, uh, one simple uh, uh, presentation on what are the activities are being carried out at the cover station and how this organic uh, matter can be done in uh, different ways. So, this is about uh, my presentation. So, although I prepared uh, the presentation for one hour, I would like to uh, minimize the the presentation to 20 or 30 minutes because already we are running late. And probably uh, you all have uh, come across all these activities that I said. Okay, so the presentation uh, uh, will go like this. Uh, myself in Ovection and background, what is organic matter and what are uh, the different uh, forests, how they can be uh, recycled uh, efficiently, and how this organic uh, matter can be managed. With different uh, perspectives and more uh, emphasis will be on uh, compost and compost derived things. The point is, all of us are being uh, aware of uh, that is the farmyard module, compost, and so many other menus, but we hardly know about uh, the internal contents of uh, the menu. So, the end product of uh, any organic matter decomposition would be this humus. So this humus is uh, one of the uh, ill understood uh, component. Although many people work on uh, decomposition of uh, different uh, uh, materials, so when it comes to understanding the end products and the uh, formation of humus, the knowledge is uh, very less. So this is uh, where I want to focus on, and a uh, little bit about uh, the biofuels. Uh, which can be generated out of uh, biomass, actually, the conclusions. And let me uh, go about uh, our campus. I work for the College of Horticulture, Security of Anglo. So, this is uh, one of the constituent colleges of uh, Horticulture University, which is headquartered at uh, Bagalpur. And we have uh, uh, the teaching campus and the research campus in uh, Bangalore. And uh, this campus is very much adjacent to the parent university, agriculture university. So that means you find two campuses side by side. One is agriculture university, and next to it, we have agriculture campus. Okay, so this is about uh, uh, our place, and this is where I work. So this is our campus and also Bangalore University. And this Bangalore University was uh, established somewhere during the uh, 1963, quite old university. And uh, during 1986, the university got bifurcated into another university called University of Agricultural Sciences at Dharma. So, one at the south and parallel to the north. Uh, Again, during 2009, these two universities were bifurcated further to result into three more universities. Like one, uh, the Raicho Agriculture University, Shimoga Agriculture and Horticulture University, and Babel Court. So here, uh, here comes our Horticulture University. This is very important. In addition to this farm, uh, fine farm university, we also have one animal uh, university. Okay? Uh, this library and animal university. So this is uh, something about. Uh, for the university set up uh, in Karnataka. So, this is the first uh, city start during 1963, and then uh, the next one was the uh, University of Agriculture Sciences in Darwin, but then for uh, the uh, particle form. And I worked for uh, the College of Agriculture here. So, we have teaching campus and research campus. So, this is our centralized facility. To uh, cater the needs of uh, the student research as well as uh, other research activities. So, before entering into the presentation and any kind of uh, work with the micro organisms, we must aware about uh, what is micro organism, so what are their kinds. So, there are several laws for the principles about uh, this micro organism. So, one such uh, law was given by Dr. David Patman. So, all students who work with the mental organism must be aware of these four principles of the last. The first one is the microorganism is always alive. 
So it has a purpose. Therefore, the organic is targeting the soil for the ecological features. And it is always behave like your friend and it is a very sensitive deposit. The second one is the microorganisms are highly sensible. Okay, they are not stupid. And the third one is they can work anything. Okay, and anything. This is the third one. And the fourth one is the microorganisms are much smarter, wiser, and more energetic than human beings. Microbiologists and all other work with microorganisms. So, all of us must keep these four principles in mind, then we can formulate and migrate the working atmosphere. So, if you take care of microorganism, the microorganisms will take care of your atmosphere. So, we will take a take home message. But now I come to the actual the part. So, what is organic matter? So, when addressing organic matter, so what is this very address? And what happens here? The organic matter is not recycled properly. So all these uh, questions I should uh, cover. And the organic matter is simply a branch on animal decay products. And this is a mixture of degradation and deep revolutionized material. And this is very heterogeneous in nature with respect to structure as well as reactivity. And there, there are many components present in even organic matter. So they can be uh, cellulose, liquids, tannins, waxes, bogies, liquids, sugars, etc. That means this is highly heterogeneous in nature. So because of this heterogeneity, the degree of decomposition may also vary. And the degree of polymerization and the various other physical, chemical, biological factors determine the decomposition rate. So let us understand about the deep organic matter very factors. It occurs predominantly in soil. So whatever the biomass that hooks up ultimately ends up in soil. And in soil, we have both living organic matter as well as non-living organic matter. So living components are plants, animals, microbes, and so many other insects, rodents, etc. All living components can come here. And under non-living organic matter, so we have particulate uh, organic matter that's, that can uh, go as deeper macro-organic matter, life fraction, etc. And we also have dissolved organic matter, humus and recalcitrant organic matter. So uh, in various ways, you can uh, classify this organic matter depending on uh, the scientific knowledge. And when it comes to organic matter, basically, there are different ways one can address. And the natural uh, organic matter decomposition occurs in soil. So this is uh, without the intervention of the uh, weight. So naturally being done by microorganisms in stages. Okay. The only thing is we need to understand and give more scientific uh, uh, information. And the second one is customized composting of animal residues, customized composting of uh, municipal trees. And we get the different kinds of different natures and sources of and each one and in different ways. And we also have different elements to cater into uh, the needs of uh, the management. And these agro recipes can also be used as a medium for industrial productions. So just uh, just now we said before we the test the use of uh, solo for for article separate their production and so other end product. Similarly, they can be used for the uh, SCP, mushrooms, sweetbreads, enzymes, antibodies, drugs, such various uh, uh, usages. And the foremost important uh, thing is these organic materials, if segregated properly and classified into different uh, purposes, they can be used for the production of biofuels. Maybe biogas, biogas, biodiesel and so many other classes of uh, fuels and the biomass to biodiesel energy is one of the most potential ingredient uh, that can explore in the near future also. Okay, so now what or uh, how this organic matter gets decomposed into the end product humus. So this is the one the point. So the organic matter one is one which contains uh, the carbon containing compounds and this carbon containing uh, compounds undergo oxidation 
by microbial means uh, to result into a brown to black complex humus product. And this product that we call it as uh, humus, and this humus contains humic substances. So the humic substances are uh, simply the components derived from humus. They are having the high molecular weight and they are heterogeneous, relatively large and stable organic uh, materials. And from this humic substances, we can derive what is called as uh, humans. These humans are uh, diffractions which are not soluble in alkali, acid, or any other uh, solvent system. So, therefore, the humans are considered as most uh, resistant for the organic materials which remains as a recalcitrant uh, uh, product in the soil. So, when we say humans, in humus, we have three important components. One is humic acid, second one is uh, fulvic acid, and third one is humans. The humic acid is simply the product of uh, a product obtained in the form of weak aliphatic and aromatic organic acids. And this can be differentiated in such a way it is soluble in water at an alkaline condition only. And it has got the ability to detect metal ions. And uh, on the contrary, the fulvic acid are again the mixtures of B, aliphatic, and aromatic compounds, but they are soluble in water at all pH. So, this is the only uh, difference. And the fulvic acid, uh, the molecular weight is comparatively smaller and will have yellow color. And whereas the fulvic acid uh, will not have any color, so it is colorless. And the third component is humus. So these are the metal salts obtained out of humic and fulvic acids. And that depends on uh, what we want, amount of carboxyl and uh, hydroxyl groups between the humic acid and fulvic acid. So, and this, uh, the functional groups, carboxyl and hydroxyl ions are uh, hydroxyl groups. They determine ultimately the cation exchange capacity and the carbon exchange capacity. Ultimately, the supply of nutrients uh, from soil to the plasma plasma membrane. So, uh, since the agency has been producing uh, uh, this uh, humic acid commercially, but we are using uh, uh, the coal like lignin and uh, lignite and other uh, uh, industry used the raw materials for production. And we, this uh, involves a huge uh, recovery recovery process. Still, it comes out like okay. So most of the industry people produce humic acid out of lignite uh, and other uh, basic discards okay, for the lignite products. So there are four important uh, theories or pathways associated about uh, how uh, the uh, humus or humic acid uh, functions are produced. So one of the theory is modified evening theory. So this theory was uh, proposed by uh, Waxman during the 1930s while so he was working with the organic matter decomposition. So what happens is there will be loss of methoxy groups and also there will be formation of orthohydrohydroxyphenols and oxidation of aliphatic side jets to form car carboxylic groups. So that means the modifications that occur to demethylation and the formation of uh, carboxylic groups are the major uh, point of uh, this theory. The second one is the theory. So how different is this from the first? So here, there will be decomposition of lignin resulting in the polyphenols and phenols. And then the polyphenols and the phenols undergo a kind of uh, primary reaction governed by different uh, enzymes and uh, that ultimately resulting in the unit of the fundamental cells. And we also have a third theory called the polyphenol theory. And this is again important where the human components are produced out of non liquid sources, say for example, cellulose okay, or some other uh, non uh, liquid materials which are present in the uh, soil or organic matter. So there can be biases, there can be uh, various other economic uh, end products, etc. And the fourth one is the condensation of sugar and amino acid. So in this, there occurs the reduction of sugar and amino acids to form different byproducts. So these byproducts again undergo polymerization and different over structural orientation to form 
this uh, substance. So that means when we talk about the humus formation, there are two important uh, components. One is the decomposition, decomposition of organic materials, depending on the nature and complexity of the constraints, and then the polymerization and synthesis of the end products, which are obtained during the decomposition. Okay, so this is in action. Uh, so, Carter's USB, so this is the uh, modified the lithium pathway given by uh, Simon A. Boxman, and this is where he brought out one particular statement. If there are no microorganisms at the earth will stand still. Okay, so uh, he made this concept, uh, this statement based on uh, uh, his uh, observations. And the second pathway is uh, the, the lignin decomposition pathway. So there will be the formation of quinones. So these quinones get polymerized to poly polyquinones, and then you will get different substances. And the third pathway is the transformation of uh, non lignin compounds into polyphenols and again to form quinones and finally diffumic acid. And the fourth pathway is the condensation of sugars and amino compounds and ultimately get the polymerase to form cubic substances. So that means, so these are the four important uh, pathways uh, we need to address. So there are two more uh, pathways also available, like the FNAX uh, uh, pathway and uh, another which is uh, uh, Voronin. Some, uh, some lady name. Okay, so uh, they are also available. So the six pathway says the humic acids are produced performed from the decomposition of red microbial cells. So this is also one of the pathway. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the decomposition that depends on uh, the complexity of material, type of material, various physical uh, and chemical components and uh, the microbial uh, uh, strength and then synthesis so where we can observe the polymerization of breakdown products into phenols and phenols and these phenols and phenols get polymerized to form polyphenols and polyphenols then there will be molecular uh, so there will be uh, attachment and uh, uh, chemical interactions with the amino groups uh, to form the most resistant in product called as so this is uh, the final flow chart so we have organic matter easily degradable so ultimately end up as uh, the mineralization of one oxidation okay so we all know about uh, the mineralization of various of organic compounds like the proteins lipids carbohydrates etc the second one is moderately degradable compounds like missing those Lignin, uh, uh, cellulose, proteins, etc. This hemicellulose again uh, comparatively easily soluble, and then they also result into the mineralized product. And the more complex materials are further uh, get broken down uh, to form residue standing microbial okay. And the most difficulty degradable materials such as uh, tannins, lignins, uh, uh, keratins. Sovereigns, etc. So they undergo uh, complex uh, reactions uh, and ultimately result into humus. And the last fraction is the formation of metallums. So this is the biological oxidation of organic matter, organic matter or generalization of uh, nutrients, organic nutrients. So now I will come to one case study. This study was conducted in our laboratory. So what we did was we subjected uh, different kinds of uh, organic material. We segregated them as fluoroquinone, and we subjected them for the composting by two different absorption. So one is absorption different from so that consisted of uh, and the second one is the best decomposer supplied by organic So we wanted to compare. So because there are a lot of human crime, 
like uh, the best from the composer is much better and uh, almost uh, the entire uh, media so this product is being advocated uh, so for that purpose uh, we boost this one but we never know uh, we never tried also uh, to isolate uh, what are uh, the nucleosendals of the microorganisms present in a particular uh, source so we found uh, eight different uh, treatments first two uh, uh, two residues decomposed by two different materials, then vegetable residues, flower residues, and the mixed residue, all uh, having the 50 kg of wet uh, 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 biomass. So, this is uh, the experimental thing. And uh, we worked out, uh, uh, we analyzed the different uh, components, physical patterns. Uh, uh, as uh, physical parameters, chemical parameters, biological parameters, the enzyme activity, uh, the major nutrients, chemical nutrients, micronutrients, organic carbon, so many uh, components have been uh, tried. And more importantly, we are interested in uh, humic acid, fluoric acid, and uh, humic acid diffractions. So that can be isolated and studied. So this was our study for them. And we also did the spectral characterization and uh, functional uh, identification, particularly for the uh, carboxy groups and the phenomenal groups. So this is how the material has been extracted. So we compost is produced, then it is subjected for the alkali in oxidation, then uh, uh, shaking for uh, one hour, then uh, centrifugation and to separate uh, the, the leachate out of uh, debris. And then pH is adjusted to the number two. So this is the protocol, standard protocol already, which is being followed for the commercial humic acid production, nothing else. And ultimately, we get uh, the end product uh, like uh, humic acid and fermic acid uh, mixture. And uh, this is central structure of the brain And then this is particular digestion using HCL to separate these two fractions. And probably you may be uh, observing that why we go for this uh, NCA treatment. So we know that this fulvic acid is soluble in HCL, whereas the humic acid is not soluble in HCL. Okay, just to extract these two components, we go for this final treatment and uh, this is how the end product looks so. so this is next. Uh, Extracted humic acid in the jet. So, this yellow colored product is the polymic acid, which is supernatural. And the bottom, uh, is the humic acid. And this humic acid is further freeze dried uh, to get uh, this consistent uh, material. And this uh, two materials are subjected for uh, previous uh, studies, like uh, estimation. And this is the final uh, composition we got. So, from the fruit residues, the fulvic acid as well as humic acid concentration was high. Okay, and then you observe the ratio. So, the, the ratio between uh, humic acid and fulvic acid we give you the humic acid index. Okay, so the humic acid index is uh, more in case of uh, the fruit residues compared to. Uh, this uh, flowers and uh, vegetables. So the, the, the table of observation. And when we went for quantification, out of 50 kg dry biomass, you can get around 1.14 and 1.036, almost 1.5% uh, of humic uh, humic acid as well as fulvic acid. That means the recovery or availability of humic uh, uh, acid and fulvic acid. Uh, by our composting case uh, uh, quite small. Okay? However, when you uh, think of application of uh, uh, three tons or ten tons of uh, FIR, the farm, so then you can imagine the magnitude of uh, humic acid in the supply and uh, the importance of uh, this humic acid in terms of uh, accelerating the metal atoms applying them to plants. So therefore, so this is the logic to apply. Uh, the organic farming uh, people for uh, facing sages and fruit, uh, the scientific background, people were applying uh, the farmyard menu uh, 
is solved and is doing is to the hydration and the lead of bone and nutrients to the ionic form. There will be the initiation of a better parts which is going inside that will be made available for plant uptake. Okay, so these are some differences between hydrochemic acid and hydrochemic acid. So then we went for uh, the spectral uh, analysis of uh, these two fractions, and uh, the E4 to E6 ratio is one such uh, ratio. So, what we uh, do is uh, uh, the uh, substance is uh, subjected for uh, spectral analysis at the visible wavelength of 465 nanometer and the 665 nanometer. And this ratio is considered as a true picture of. Uh, the humic acid. Okay, so this is uh, the outcome of uh, the spectral analysis, and we are interested in these two carboxyl groups and phenol groups. So there is plenty of uh, uh, concentrations of carboxyl groups and phenol groups. So that means any organic matter if degraded. Systematically, ultimately, they want to take up the degrees of humic and phenolic acids. So, we not be three months, we take even uh, six months or uh, uh, nine months of one year if it is uh, happening in uh, the actual conditions. Okay, so why are this uh, humification and production of uh, tumors? So, we are uh, importing the uh, fertility to soil. So, you just uh, understand this particular uh, slide. So, where we have functional groups like carboxyl groups and phenolic groups, and they get dissociated to get uh, uh, to become a minus in the mass. And these negatively charged functional groups can attract, can generate the cations which is present in soil. And similarly, the uh, Hydrophilic ends of uh, the dissociated uh, functional groups can form a fringe between metal ions and solids. And that's where they can uh, uh, attract, they can attach uh, the metal ions. So that can be made available to plant uptake. So you see this humic acid, which contains negative charged ions, and that they are insulated, and then it is sent to the um, plant for the root. Okay, so this is the principle which is happening in soil. And then uh, ultimately, these are uh, the end results. So there is uh, increasing cationic capacity, there will be a better response of uh, growth, there will be absence also, there will be production of elongated uh, uh, both the short growth and various other things, diminution of uh, soil compactness, and there are so many associated uh, uh, results. And even moisture conservation things. Okay, so now I'll come to uh, the components. Uh, what we have done in the course. So we worked extensively on uh, different aspects of uh, biofilm handling. So we did use uh, uh, whatever the weeds which are available in excess, and uh, we also used the agricultural weeds uh, uh, during the production. We get so many kinds of uh, weeds. So all these agreements uh, can be subjected for uh, useful purpose, maybe in the form of uh, uh, decomposed uh, organic matter or uh, menu, or in the form of uh, biogas and uh, bioethanol. So, so we did the different, uh, we did try different uh, types of uh, uh, biogas plants in order to identify which method is, uh, which model is suitable for a particular. Uh, in, but, uh, depending on the complexity and depending on the nature of uh, the biomass. Uh, and also, we have adopted uh, some of the technologies which are being developed in those terms. And particularly, one such uh, 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 showcasing the material is the development of uh, uh, called the solid state fermentation biogas plants of. Uh, SR agriculture university. So um, what we know is uh, we have institutional type of various plants and also conventional uh, family type of various plants. And nowhere uh, people who are the successful in constructing the what's called a fixed dope plants of uh, capacity more than 
a ten or twenty cubic meter. Okay. So this uh, uh, Punjab people and the uh, Haryana people who are uh, successful in construction of a fixed girl by a students of 100 cubic meter capacity, 50 at home. And you were the first to adapt uh, and construct uh, the so one such a virus on site. Although you were uh, only like a one less, you could uh, construct uh, and commission this uh, virus plant in a successful way for almost uh, uh, 10 years. So, uh, meanwhile, I do not know the status of uh, that virus plant because I have been uh, transferred to some other campus during the, the transition time. Okay, and uh, the success story of uh, this thing is uh, we were also uh, successful in uh, installing uh, uh, several such uh, virus plants, the one in Goa and two more in the other, and uh, many people uh, obtained uh, the diagrams from our site. And uh, one best example in the, of this success story is uh, we have uh, installed uh, 50 cubic meter biogas plant in uh, one of the MLS uh, farm. So we have uh, a name called the uh, Winayping Company. So he is holding a very big uh, farm and uh, he is having uh, some 2,000 uh, uh, cans. So both the profile side of that set out. And he is producing the large quantities of meat. And he wanted to uh, convert this uh, biomass. Capital to energy as well as uh, to direct work in the beta industry of the stock. So uh, he consulted us uh, and we gave the technology. And uh, so we went to this farm and we are constructing uh, this property during the uh, 2011. And still uh, it is in function. So there are uh, uh, such uh, things. And we also worked on uh, bioethanol, bioethanol, etc. So now the last part of uh, my presentation, this is uh, very much useful for uh, the students. So what is a biomass? The two perspectives, biomass can be the cell or right? and the other way is that it's an organic matter produced for the organ, any given organs. And biologically, uh, we can convert this biomass into bioenergy. And uh, we have different types of uh, Pathways. And then, so one is biomass, which is converted into biofuels, and we are interested in biogas, and uh, the another one is bioethanol. So the rest of uh, the pathways are the of the whole concept. Okay. So we are concentrating on the biogas to bioenergy and then bioethanol. Okay, so there are uh, two different uh, types of uh, uh, biofuels depending on the raw material you can use. Of course, we can use the third generation products, the fourth generation product, uh, biofuel generation products. Okay, so it's all uh, for the chemical things. So, what are these first generation fuels? They are biofuels made out of sugar, starch, vegetable oil, and animal fats. That means those foods which are used at present either as food or as feed, they are considered as. The first generation of our materials for energy production. So, we have different uh, examples, and we want the bioethanol and bio gas. And uh, second generation of uh, fuel is uh, the bio fuel produced out of non food crops, for example, lignosin. So, just before she presented the uh, uh, findings, okay. so this is one of the Lignosinclosing uh, or the second generation target so that can be subjected to various uh, conversions. And we have different types of uh, uh, the biodiesel uh, grade materials like bio hydrogen, dimethyl pentagon, hydrothermal, and dairy diesel. So, all these are the uh, diesel grade uh, biofuels. So, the question is why? We have to concentrate about uh, lignosinidus materials because the starchy materials like molasses and other uh, things are used as food. We cannot replace, we can't, we are not self sufficient enough to uh, convert these food materials for such activities. 
Sorry, if you are selfless, not only you could have converted these things for a bioenergy like your bioethanol. No, our Indian understanding is this point. Okay, so what the, the extent of uh, limnocellulosics available? So you just imagine these statistics. So there is 2.5 to 10 to the power 21 fish thermal units of solar energy is being received from that. And out of this, only 2 into 10 to the power 17 to be per year is being used. And the surplus is stored in the form of photosynthesis, lignocellulose. So, therefore, plentiful of lignocellulosics are available. There can be no outside uh, uh, materials, and there can be agro-resin, uh, industrial discards, and so many other types. So, all of these are reaching cellulose and lignin. And if you are able to treat and uh, remove this lignin, then the cellulose and lignocellulose can be available for various complications. So, depending on polymerization, depending on the chemical structure, so we have these products. So, this is the range of availability of uh, different components in any organic matter, particularly in plant system. So, 35 to 50 percent cellulose, uh, 25 to 10 percent human cellulose, and uh, uh, 50 to 30 percent lignin. Okay. Now, the lignin can be used for different purposes. Similarly, the, the cellulose and the missing users will have different uh, functions. So, I want to uh, uh, stress on this particular uh, slide. So, this uh, will be more appealing to you. So, biomass handling is one of the critical uh, components. Then, pretreatment and uh, liquefaction of the uh, animal and saccharification. So, you observe here, there is uh, a separate hydrolysis and fermentation, simultaneous saccharification and fermentation, and uh, a simultaneous saccharification and So, these are uh, the different pathways to produce uh, bioethanol. And uh, when you say it's a separate, separate uh, uh, saccharification and fermentation, we can think of uh, using exosis and pentosis at a time. So, what we do, we do the hydrolysing both. Uh, the cellulose is carrying this because we get uh, the monomers that can be enzymatic process or any other chemical process. And these two can be converted at time to ethanol by employing a system where both C6 and C5 sugars can be formed. So, probably uh, think of uh, this kind of uh, applications in your. Uh, Future works. So, what are the RD challenges? So, the pretreatment, so because of uh, so many complexity, enzymatic uh, cellulose hydrolysis, we do not know what is the cost of the cellulose and uh, uh, that the, the students work with it also the extraction. So, it is highly expensive, even the one gram of the uh, cellulose. And we cannot uh, play on uh, using the cellulose unless we could use the crude uh, cellulose or some other uh, pathways. Uh, to simplify our production pathway. Then the pits, the cost is high, then all fermentation. Okay, so how these uh, things can be managed? So probably you have not come across this particular uh, candle. So instead of uh, laying on the traditional saccharomyces and fermentation, you can think of using clostridium thermosilam and clostridium thermosilam. So, this plastic thermophilin is uh, an anaerobic organism, which is thermophilic, active at 60 degrees Celsius, and that minimizes various uh, uh, resources, like it is uh, uh, 2.5 times higher in terms of uh, cellulose conversion, and it is uh, faster uh, compared to saccharomyces cerevisiae. And since it is, it uses uh, carbon dioxide. It is on the, uh, this is an aerobic system. The contamination problem and expenditure on supply of oxygen can be prevented. So, this is why you can uh, minimize this. And this particular uh, principle and uh, uh, production systems is being uh, the carried out in Italy, that the spring, some parts of uh, European countries. So, we have never to repeat uh, this system. Indian conditions because of the complexity of working with the uh, anaerobic organisms. Okay, that requires uh, 
sophisticated than the laboratory facilities, and you will be with patients. Unless you have passion for your research, you cannot venture into this kind of activities. So, this is the pathway from the cellulose. The, this is the whole generation. Cellulose is converted to cellulose and then to ethanol, right? Plastidium thermosin. And again, if you have xylose sugar, pentose sugar, and that can be utilized by plastidium thermosin. So, this organism is capable of using pentose sugar, and this is capable of using plastidium at two different depths. Okay? So, depending on uh, the molecular weight, so the, there will be concentration of uh, uh, exosugars and filter uh, sugars. So these two organisms complement each other and end up in the production of ethanol. So this is uh, something uh, we have been uh, carrying out uh, in our area. So this is uh, one such uh, successful model. So we have uh, constructed the 25 kilowatt uh, Electricity generating by as plants right uh, by our campus. So, this is uh, the, uh, the vicinity of uh, dairy of US. And uh, probably you have heard of uh, Ramishankar Marshall. So, where we have installed a Melanesh uh, plant for the conversion of the kitchen waste to other, uh, I do not use the word uh, waste, rather, I use the uh, residue. So, kitchen residue. For the biogas, it can put it X. And similarly, uh, the vermicompost is another uh, component, and the kitchen waste is being used to be master for putting X. So, if you have passion, if you have patients, uh, this uh, management of uh, the organic residues is uh, quite uh, easy. And the best management is to segregate the organic materials. To either suitable for composting or suitable for biogas production. Depending on the project, we can go for the application. We have various technologies and uh, that's it uh, from my side. So, the composting is one of the 